down calls and we caught up with Big Ben afterwards. What happened with those QB sneaks that you didn't call? More than a foot twice. Mm -hmm. 19 times in your career you have rushed on fourth and one. 18 times you converted them. Why twice today? No quarterback sneak. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's been a while since we've run a quarterback sneak. Um, I'm for it. I don't know if that's that's kind of over my head when it comes to um, why we don't do it. It's, you know, I'm not going to sit here and second guess why don't we quarterback sneak. I, I don't know how many years it's been since we ran a quarterback sneak. It's, it's not like it's just this year. So, um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. Yeesh. The AFC Championship is set, however. Now New England reaching the conference title game for an unprecedented seventh straight season. And they'll host the Steel. No, Jacksonville. And that stingy defense who last played in the AFC Championship 18 years ago. So it's the Jags and the Pats on Sunday. Initial thoughts on this game. The Patriots don't want to see the Jaguars because they, they you know, you can talk about the Patriots sacking Mariota eight yep. times, but Yannick Ngakwe has got a little something for Tom Brady, and I'm a little scared about that. I also think the success might be with the running backs out of the backfield. You saw Derrick Henry with a huge, what, like 66-yard touchdown reception. Mm -hmm. Kyle Juszczyk had some success against the Jaguars as well, so running backs that can catch the ball, and it's weird because the Patriots have quite a few of those. Yeah, I'm still trying to decompress. It's hard for me to spin this forward, but we have to talk about it. The Jaguars, they are as impressive as ever. And you know, as much as we're going to credit Tom Brady and the gold, the coaching staff, I feel like the Jaguars have a good a chance at winning this game than they did going into this week. And what I love is the narrative will be Blake Bortles going against Tom Brady and the Jaguars are so young and they can't handle the pressure. And all of a sudden they're in a situation they've never been. Cool, that's fine and dandy. They've been hearing this story all year and when you listen to these guys talk I was watching Tilda Smith after the game you know we love him here on the show and he said they said oh you got one more game before you get to the Super Bowl and he said one more game we still got that one game it's not a guy us now our Kansas or the the Florida Gulf Coast team runs yes. into the Gators like this is the big dog Fair. and I'm trying to choose my words carefully because I would love to be like come on it's Jacksonville I don't feel that way at all if you want to beat the Patriots you don't line up your all pro receivers and your great quarterback you line up the guys that hit them, mm. line the guy that run them. Mm. It's almost like a nightmare matchup for New England because we've seen guys beat them with the same formula. We need to go down the history. We have right. all week to do it. Von Miller, but, Justin Tucker, Yes, Michael that's how you do it with an old Peyton Manning. That's how you do it. Right. Hit Brady and you hit the hole and they can do both. They call themselves Saxonville. It's the Saxonville. one. Way. It's actually branded. It's literally the one way to beat the Patriots in a big game. Terrell Suggs has done yeah. it. Justin right. Tuck has done it. Mm -hmm. You have to sack Brady and they can sack Brady. Let me ask you guys this then. Another storyline that we're going to be hearing. Let's just get ahead of it right now is the Tom Coughlin angle, right? That mm -hmm. he's part of that team. He, of course, handed the Patriots two Super Bowl yeah. losses when he was the head coach of the Giants. So tell me, do we buy into any of that narrative? Does that have any effect on this game, or is that going to be overblown? I do. There's actually a great piece in the New York Times on Sunday talking about Coughlin's uh, you know, fingerprints. What he does? Nothing to take away from Doug Marone. Yeah. Coughlin sets the tone. He says, here's how we're going to dress around the building. Here's what's going to happen if you're not on time for a meeting. Here's what's going to happen if we don't practice the right way. He's very <laughs> much involved. Mm. And just to have that confidence knowing that guy's beaten Belichick yeah. twice. And we have that resource. Whether or not he's calling the plays on the sideline right. or not, he is very much a part of the organization. And those young guys can feed off that saying, why do we have a 70-something-year-old guy just around? Uh -huh. yeah. This is why. And this week. Weirdly, I think that yeah. they might have more confidence than even the Patriots. This team, out of all the four that are left, has the most confidence because they just went into Pittsburgh. They went on the road and got themselves a huge win. Yeah. And they're feeling themselves. And Tom Coughlin's presence is the reason that I don't think that they, they feel like they're playing with house money. I think Tom Coughlin's like, I expect a win here. This yeah. is big. This is what I want. And last week, we were talking about Tom Brady and how he knows Dick LeBeau's defenses and he's extremely confident. Going Now, imagine this young team. That's the fastest team Tom Brady has ever faced. Yeah. A couple of DBs that get their hands on rocks, and I'm not talking about pass breakups. They're trying to get interceptions. And a team that is aggressively seeking turnovers yeah. with a, a quarterback like Tom Brady, similar to Big Ben, it's not going to run a lot. Tom Brady's going to sit inside that pocket. So if you understand that as a game plan, you're not going to sit there and try to bring pressure all day. You're going to try to get home with three guys, four guys, five guys, maybe some stunts and twists up front, and then allow your linebackers, your safeties, and your cornerbacks to make plays on the ball when it's in the air. Seen a lot of Deion Lewis and James White again in the yeah, game already. Facts. All right, for the latest news and notes from around the league, let's welcome in our NFL Network insider, Ian Rappaport. Ian, we saw Viking safety Andrew Sandejo leave yesterday's win early with a head injury. What's his status? A big game for them and a huge role as they try to get that title in Philadelphia. No, a huge game, but a very real possibility that Sandejo is not on the field next to Harrison Smith 
when they play on Sunday. He is now officially in the NFL's concussion protocol, this after a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit from Saints receiver Michael Thomas, one that appeared at the time to actually knock Sandeo out. Uh, we will see how he progresses over the course of the week, and every concussion is different. The way each player responds is different as well, but we have often seen players enter the concussion protocol, miss a week, and then come back for the next game. If that were the case for the Vikings, of course, it would have to be the Super Bowl, but we will see how he is as you get later in the week. Ian, the Patriots coaching staff, they're busy preparing for yet another AFC title game, but both the offense coordinator Josh McDaniels and defense coordinator Matt Patricia are the leading candidates for the vacant head coaching jobs out there around the league. So what's the latest on where they stand? Well, the expectation is that both coordinators leave for new jobs and the Patriots will, in fact, have to replace the lieutenants for Bill Belichick. We'll start with Matt Patricia. He is, in fact, expected to be the Detroit Lions coach, which really had been the case for several weeks. Even before they fired Jim Caldwell, the choice for general manager Bob Quinn was always Patricia. Wanted a defensive coach to be able to keep the offensive side of the ball in place. They have a strong relationship, despite what you may have heard about the Giants and Patricia. This was always going to happen, and in fact, as soon as it is possible, it is going to happen. And then there's the case of Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator, a top candidate with the Giants and also the Colts. The likelihood is he ends up as the next coach in Indianapolis, could bring Matt Eberflus as his defensive coordinator. Of course, no one is allowed to strike deals until after they are done playing, but it looks like both of these things are as close as they can get. And they are eyeing their seventh trip to the AFC Championship game, so all of their eyes on that one against the Jags. For now, all the other business, they'll take care of it later. Ian, you reported before the wild card that Titans head coach Mike Malarkey's job may be in jeopardy had his team lost to the Chiefs. What did their win in that game earn for Coach Malarkey? A bunch of security, and maybe security that nobody saw coming for Titans coach Mike Malarkey. You're right, had they lost, actually in week 17, likely would have been fired as the Titans were set to target Josh McDaniels themselves to help come in and uh, get the improvement for Marcus Mariota that they sought. Well, they didn't lose week 17, and they didn't lose in the playoffs either, and all of that is expected to earn Mike Malarkey a contract extension. I'm told the Titans have offered one, the two sides are negotiating, and he is going to be back at the 